What's up YouTube, this is Tube Digger. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can record your VST plugin automation into MPC 2.1. In the first part of the video, I'll be focusing on a VST effect, and in the second part of this video, I'll focus on a VST instrument plugin. So for the first part of this video, I've put together a simple boom bap hip hop instrumental track. Now you may or may not know this about me, but I'm not a big fan of using other people's samples or samples from sample packs. I only really use them sparingly, if at all, to bolster my tracks and give them an extra edge if they're lacking a bit of weight, because most sample packs are pretty well produced. As you can see in my expansion browser here, I've got quite a few MPC expansion packs. I've got Arab Music, Chill Trap, Dark Parallax, Future Dimensions, Hook City Trap and Soul Edition, Raw Cuts and Slow Mo Trap and Ambient Lows. But for this track, for this demonstration video, all the sounds in this track come from Raw Cuts. The reason why I've done this is because it's very quick to put something together using these sounds. So these sounds are very good, or rather these expansion packs are very good if you're the type of producer that's knocking out quite a lot of library music and want to do quick productions and sell your tracks quite quickly and not spend too much time crafting them from your own sample libraries. These samples have been very well thought out. You can tell because they do work very well together with a minimal amount of editing and effects processing. In fact, I've done very little to these sounds for them to work with one another. All I've done is change the pitches of a couple of them and shorten some of the samples, but they don't have any mastering or any effects on them. They do actually sound very good out of the box, so to speak. Hopefully I'll be doing a video series where I can cover all the different sounds that you get in these packs. But in the meantime, please go over to akaiprofessional.com and check out the packs that are available. I've only got a select few. They do have a lot more on the Akai Pro website. So first of all, I'm gonna take you through all the samples that I've got from this Raw Cuts expansion pack, and then I'll play you the track back so you can hear those sounds in context. So I'm not gonna list out all the different pads, just keep an eye on them here and I'll tell you what the samples are. So we've got a kick, rim shot, hi-hat, nothing on pad four, pad five and six, two guitar licks. Then we've got a horn sample. Then we've got a Rhodes and then a pitched up version of that. Then I've got another rim shot, a really nice cinematic string sample on pad 11. Now we can't hear that because I've used some pad mutes. As you can see, I've recorded some pad mutes in there for this actual pad. So let's just move up to where it's not muted. So I really like this, it's really cinematic and atmospheric and I would definitely use this sample in another production. Be really good to loop it up and have it used as a drone maybe. Same again, we've got that same horn sample that's just pitched up. And then I've got three bass samples on pad 13, 14 and 15. And nothing on pad 16. So I'm gonna play the track back to you now. I'm just gonna play 16 bars of it so you can hear those sounds in context. And then we'll look at the VST plugin effect that I've got assigned to this program. So there you go, all pretty simple, all sounding quite nice. The track doesn't do much else. It kind of loops over in the same way for the rest of the bars. I think it finishes at bar 57. Anyway, let's go and take a look at the plugin. So if we go down here, if this isn't showing up for you, your inserts for the actual program, go up to view, go to inspector, and there you can choose show inspector. If we deselect that, that will disappear and the sequencer will expand but we need to choose the inspector 
and make sure we've got sends and inserts so we can see our effects there. Okay, so show inspector and these are our inserts. So we don't need the XY effect. I was playing around with that, but I'm not gonna use that for this video. I'll switch that off. So in our second insert slot, we've got this plugin, Tornado. So I'm gonna click on that. So this effect is really great. It's got eight different slots where you can drag and drop these different effects. They're all different kind of glitchy effects like slice arranger, pan looper, looper, pitch looper, reverse delays, all kinds of good stuff. I'm not gonna use this one, Voltage Girl, so I'll just show you how to drag that onto there. So you just drag that onto there and you can swap out the effect. These eight dials here that you see can be affected by the Q links on the MPC X and the MPC Live or whatever controller you've got. But for me, I've got the MPC X, so they're showing up in the first eight Q links. Okay, so I can move all those independently at the same time. So I'm gonna record automate those movements, okay? So the default parameters are set up for me there. Now let's just move the plugin out of the way. So currently I'm in screen mode and that's showing me all the current parameters that I can control with my Q-Link knobs. But if we change that to project mode, we can now freely configure these, okay? So these bottom ones are already configured as are the pans and the mutes there. But let's just choose one of these that aren't configured. Let's click on it. Then we click learn. And then we can choose any of the parameters within this Tornado VST effects. So let's actually go into one of these effects by pressing edit. And let's just choose this rate control for one of the LFOs. And there you go. It's popped up in our Q-Link mode there. And now we can use that Q-Link to control it. So that's how you can configure your own parameters depending on what VST effects you've got. You just literally click on the Q-Link that you wanna assign it to, click learn, and then move the parameter of whatever VST you're using. So let's click out of there, and let's just return my Q-Link mode to screen mode. And I'm gonna make sure all those are turned down. So now I'm gonna make sure I'm in right automation mode, which I already am. If you're not, it's this button up here on the MPC X, it's just under your VU meter, which is situated in the top right corner of your MPC X or towards the top right. If you've got an MPC Live, it's usually situated towards the top right middle of the screen, depending on what screen you're in. Okay, so I'm gonna keep it in this view in the software so you can see any automation that gets written into the sequencer. And I'm gonna just move my plugin, uh, Tornado plugin interface up here so you can see me control these amount knobs with my Q-Links. So I'm gonna record from the start and just keep an eye on the parameters here. I'm just gonna move this up and you'll see these get populated with these different parameters in the Tornado. To view all those automation lanes, you just click on here in the sequencer and you can see all your automation and you can edit that automation. Now, because I recorded the automation in with my Q-Links, we've got smooth curves. I know it looks like they're stepped, but the automation is smooth. It's just that visually it looks a lot more stepped than it actually sounds. If we did want to set the automation to stepped values, we could just get our pencil tool make sure we're on a particular time division in the time correction box up here and choose a particular time division to draw those automation curves in. We can also press the note repeat button on the MPC controller that we're using and 
in the main page at least, you can select the different time divisions from there and you'll see that change up in here in the software. So let's just choose one eighth, so the bigger resolution and that's where you'll be able to actually make lower resolution automation curves. So let's just play that sequence back just to show you that that's all recorded in perfectly and you'll see those knobs move as we go through the sequence. So now I'm gonna play back and you'll hear that automation and just keep an eye on the knobs and they'll move as we go through the sequence. That's pretty much it for the VST effect. So that's how you can configure and also write your automation movements for any given VST effect plugin. So let's just move on now to VST instruments. Let's go to File, New Project, don't save. And now let's just look over here at our track type. So our default track is always going to be a drum program. We need to choose a plugin instrument. You can set your default plugin to pop up here. I've got mine set to Serum, which is a wavetable synthesizer. If you want to change yours to a particular plugin of your preference, you go up to MPC, Preferences, go down to Project and Default Plugin Synth, and that will allow you to choose any VST plugins that you've got currently installed on your computer. So we can choose any of these different ones and that will show up anytime you reboot your MPC 2.1 software. You don't have to save that, it will just store that in memory and change that default synth anytime you open it after changing it. So mine's Serum, let's press this icon here and we can open up the interface for Serum. So I'm gonna select one of my own patches from this box, drop that down, go to user, and let's choose Spectra 2. So I'm actually gonna switch off my looping for the sequencer and that way I can just record in an indefinite amount of bars of this sound into my sequencer. So I'm gonna put it into record arm mode, play from the start and just trigger one of my pads. So there's our one note that we've recorded in for Serum. Now, unlike the VST plugins, we now have to switch our Q-Link mode to program mode. And that way we can access all the parameters for the plugin program. Because essentially, whatever VST we've got loaded into our plugin program, that then becomes the actual program parameters in the same way as a drum program would but now we're looking at the VST instrument parameters. And as you can see, they pop up there in the 16 Q-Links that we've got available. If we want to change one of these, it's just the same process. If we don't want this Q-Link 13 to affect the random phase parameter that we can see here on this oscillator A, just look at that moving up and down as I move that, or if I grab my Q-Link, Q-Link 13 on my MPCX, that will move that. Let's say we want to swap that for this remap parameter. We just press learn and we move that parameter. That's actually called warp. Uh, for some reason it says remap on there, but it's actually warp. So we can move that now and now that will move. So we can do that for any of these. We just select the parameter that we want to swap, make sure we're in learn mode and then change any other parameter. So let's go to LFO2 and change the rate of that. And there you go it's changed that Q-Link knob to control LFO2 rate. So again, I'm just gonna quickly record some automation. I'm gonna put it into right automation mode by clicking up here in your MPC-X. It's again, it's towards the top right of your 
top panel underneath the VU meter or in the MPC Live, it's on the main screen towards the top right of the screen and in some of the other pages. So let's play back and I'm just gonna move my Q links and maybe I'll use the mouse as well to show you that you can also move the mouse on these to record additional parameters in. So I think I'm gonna choose, let's choose the wavetable position, that's actually there. So I'm gonna use that with my Q link and maybe I'll affect this warp parameter with my mouse. So we don't need to obviously put the sequencer into record mode, we just need to be in right automation mode. So you can see, again, we've recorded in the automation and up here we can see the parameters that we've actually automated. And like I showed you in the first part of the video, you can get your pencil, you can edit that, delete that. If you just select it, you can just press delete on your keyboard or you can get your eraser tool and get rid of that. So that's me pressing delete on my keyboard, undo, or we can get the eraser tool and rub out sections of that. Of course, the eraser is also being dictated by the time divisions. So let's just undo that. If we go and switch our time division to off, we can just edit out each individual point in a lot finer resolution. So that's it guys. That's just to show you that the MPC 2.1 software is fully capable of manipulating and automating and recording that automation for your VST plugins. And it works in exactly the same way that any other fully fledged door does. And the MPC 2.1 software is definitely on a par with everything else out there. It just works in a different way, but of course that experience is further enhanced if you've got something like the MPC-X or the MPC-Live, MPC-Touch, or any of the other MPC controllers that work with MPC 2.1. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. This is Tube Digger, and I'm out.